Isn't it just a beautiful thing just to take some time to make ourselves available to God's presence? Morena Fano, how are you this morning? Doing all right? <laughs> hey, my name is Sio Vailua, and I am one of the senior uh, pastors here. And um, it's so good to, to be here at church this morning. But um, look, I was, I was just thinking just before, such a random thought. Who managed to see the rugby last night? It's crazy. I'm talking about the All Blacks vs. Japan. And I'll tell you what, the All Blacks almost got humbled last night by an incredible and brave team. It also made me think about the first time that I got humbled on the rugby field myself. Yes, believe it or not, I used to play rugby. I was a centre uh, back in my high school years. Um, but I remember one time we came to play an inter-school game with another college, actually here in Palmerston North. And um, I misjudged my, my opponent, the guy that was marking me, um, to the point because I, I looked at him and I thought, you're a small Samoan, so I'm definitely going to get past you. <laughs> well, Hello. I ran down the field and I went to step him and he folded me in half. No lies. Like I was so damaged from that that humbling that I had to pick up all my pride that was scattered all over the field. But you know, while we're on that note of, of humbling, I want to ask you a serious question this morning. Have you ever been humbled by a life experience yourself? Go on, take a moment and, and, and think about it. Have you ever been put in a situation where you realized that you weren't as smart as, as, and as gifted as you thought you were? I'm sure we've all had to eat some humble pie at some stage of our lives. Yeah. I remember a, an experience at high school where I went through some tough times in relation to humbling myself. In my junior years, I played at a very high level of volleyball. And, um, and then when I, when I turned form four, uh, form, uh, form four, which is year 10, I was actually asked to come up and play in the senior grade. And so me, like, you know, thinking that I was this incredible young guy that has finally gone to another level. I realized that I was a very small fish in a massive pond when I, when I moved up to the senior levels. <laughs> there were guys that were actually way taller than me. They could spike way harder than me. And I'll tell you what, they, they had stamina for days. I remember saying to the coach during the year, like, do you think I'll get some game time? He said, well, look, see, all all in time. And so as the year went on, I I didn't get any court time. We prepared for, like, national games, and I didn't get any court time. And then I, I remember one particular volleyball nationals that was held here at the stadium, I sat there and I just was just complaining. I was like, man, look, I've trained so hard for this now. I'm like at this really elite level. I can play as good as anyone now, but I'm still getting no game time. And my coach could see it in my behavior. He was like, what's wrong, Seal? And I was like, nothing. We played one of the teams that actually were one of the best volleyball teams in New Zealand, Calston College. And then one of our players got injured in the middle of the game. And then all of a sudden, I was thrown onto the court. And I remember just looking out to these huge guys thinking, okay, (laughs) now's my time to shine. 
But what a humbling experience that was, for sure. But you know, one of the most amazing passages of Scripture in the Bible is Philippians 2, verse 6 to 8, in which Paul demonstrates the humility of Christ. Everybody say humility. And the Apostle Paul describes it this way. Who, speaking about Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now consider Paul's words for a moment. Friends, in this verse alone, we see such a profound demonstration of Christ's character. That is evidently marked by humility. Jesus, who was the eternal God himself, possessed with great splendor, glory, and divine power, relinquished his divinity and limited his appearance on earth and made himself of no reputation. Meaning that Jesus willfully and deliberately took on the flesh of a man. We're talking about God here. And took upon himself the role of a servant. My friends, out of deep love for you and I, Jesus humbled himself by being obedient, which is the essence of humility. The essence of humility. Obedience. How many find it hard to be obedient sometimes? Ask my wife, I'm pretty shocking at times. But you know, one thing I do admire about my wife is the way that she does raise our boys. You know, Luca, I'm just so blown away by, by him sometimes and the things that he says. But for many years, I, I've seen Sarah at work in a, a training. Like, I, I just do what she tells me to do. <laughs> I'll go to her back. But I love it. You know, there's, there's the yes mum. Whenever she asks him to say, yes, mum. Okay, mum. <laughs> it's funny, though, when, when he leaves things lying around, though. Because, you know, Sarah, you know, with her amazing, profound speech, she always comes in, she says, she throws it in there. Come on, come on, son. You've been disobedient again. Come on, pick up your toys, and then you can move on to the, the next activity. Yes, mum. Yes, mum. But look, that, that didn't just happen by, by default. Or no conversations at all. It happened deliberately through conversation. Through teaching. And how many know that it's not natural for us in our carnal nature to want to obey anything? Now friends, Clothing ourselves with humility is absolutely essential if we are to truly walk in the way and practices of Jesus. Because if it was important to Him, it must be important to us. Friends, humility was the distinct hallmark of Jesus' humanity. Oh, come on. He didn't come to this world on special terms or with privileges. Nor was he spared of the frustrations, the limits and the pains of our world. But rather, he was all in. Fully human in body, 
mind, heart, will, and surroundings. Fully human in his vulnerabilities to the sinful works of this world. Yet despite all these challenges, this is what I love about our Savior. He still chose humility. And total obedience to God the Father. But I want to ask you a question this morning, family. Can I ask that from one family member to another? When was the last time you chose to put your pride aside? When was the last time you practiced the essence of humility? which is obedience. When was the last time you allowed yourself to be vulnerable? Allowed yourself to accept that you may not have it all together. Friends, when was the last time you chose to do what your human nature doesn't feel like doing? Ultimately, humility and obedience go hand in hand. Without one, the other is nearly impossible. It's like the example of trying to teach my my kids to obey. Our, Our boys can either choose to humbly accept our instructions or not. But friends, we too have the same choice. When called by God to do hard things, We can cross our arms in defiance and say, no, no, thank you. Or we can wrestle with it. We can wrestle with the sin nature. We can wrestle with self. Just as Jesus experienced that many times on his journey to the cross, we can do the same. Because true obedience is walking in humility. Can I get an amen this morning? True obedience is walking in humility. And honestly, it wasn't easy that very first time when I knew that I had issues. I mean, for one, I'm a male, right? Stubborn by nature. Thinking that I could just take a hard enough pill and just like carry on with life, even though I knew I had wounds. But I knew I had to come to a place where I I literally could not do it on my own. Obedience. God constantly on my tail saying, Seal, you cannot heal on your own. But would you listen to me? Would you allow me to minister to you, to counsel you, to place the right people around you so that you can heal? And all it required on my part was a heart that would position himself to say, Yes, Lord. Your will be done, not mine. Imagine the church if we could but say, man, Lord, I humble myself to your presence. I yield to you in obedience because I know that I don't have it together, but I know that you do. How wonderful would that be? Friends, Jesus' humility did not stop at obedience. And the Apostle Paul adds that it went to the point of death. Yes, Christ's obedience was an all-the-way kind of obedience. He didn't just obey for a time or as long as it was comfortable. 
and they tried a different path. No, he obeyed to the point of death. Because true obedience endures. Oh, friends, Jesus didn't begin in obedience and then all of a sudden fold to disobedience. Instead, he obeyed his earthly parents. Check that out in Luke 2, verse 51. And he obeyed God, the Father, in childhood, in adolescence, in adulthood, in Nazareth, in Galilee, and all the way to Jerusalem. Friends, true obedience sees the word and the promises of God all the way, no matter the cost. No matter the cost, it trusts the Father. It does not trust human instinct or logic. It trusts only in the Father. Would you stay the course? Would you rise to meet that challenge, church? Man, what prideful behaviors do you and I need to lay down or bring forth? What behaviors may be inhibiting your ability to show true humility? What pressures are currently mounting up in your life? that you know needs transparency or maybe even healing in prayer. Because friends, true humility is taking the road that is less traveled. The one that is bumpy. The one that is uncomfortable and will potentially hurt, but at the end of the day, it's the road that will ultimately lead to restoration. It will lead to restoration. You hearing me this morning? Faith in Christ will help to kill pride. That's what I know for sure. (laughs) The pride that stands between you and true humility. Because when you choose to surrender your life to Jesus... You are saying, I am no longer in control, but I relinquish my need to resolve things on my own, Lord. May your will be done, not mine. You know, there's nothing that a parent wouldn't do to keep their kids safe, amen? Oh, come on. They're the next generation. By the future church. Man, I've told you before, I've even jumped into water and I can't even swim that well. Just to like, make sure that my kids don't go under. But then that's not such a good idea, is it either? Because then they'll be without a father. Goodness. Faith is what a child exhibits when they are happy to be helpless and safe in a parent's arms. Man, does that remind you of something? A child doesn't boast in their self-sufficiency, but rather they boast in the one that keeps them safe. Like we can post, we can boast in our God, in our Father, in our Dad but it requires a spirit of obedience and humility, church, to say, man, Lord, I want to be helpless in your presence. I want to be helpless to you, Lord, the one that can heal me, the one that can restore me, can restore my family, can restore the circumstances and the adversities that I face in life. Lord, I want to be helpless to your presence in the spirit of obedience and humility. Friends, Jesus is yearning to see us fully redeemed and reconciled back to himself meant that he needed to express the greatest of humility. 
one that has defined our faith as Christians. By humbling himself, he became obedient unto death. And moreover, by acknowledging and obeying his father, even went to the point of death, even to the cross. And that's how Paul expresses that most remarkable claim when he says he humbled himself. He humbled himself for you and I. He gave himself the, his natural being just for you and I. Thank you, Lord. The ultimate expression of humility. When he took the form of a man and gave his life for you and me. And I, I think that deserves for all of us just to stand in this moment. If I could have my beautiful singers and band up here as well, it'd be awesome. Hey, why don't you just take a moment? Man, we don't have to have an agenda as such. But we can take some time and we can put into practice the very thing that we've been speaking about this morning. And what does it mean to you to bring your humility to the cross this morning? Friends, God does not command our humility. Only His hand, His voice, and plan conspire to humble us. He does not invite us to humble ourselves in no small measure either. But simply by learning from the self-humbling example of Jesus. Friends, the humility of Christ shows us that true humility is not just us doing our own thing, but God's image shining in its fullness. To humble oneself is not to be less than human either. I want to let you know that. To humble ourselves is to come even closer to Him. To the flourishing for which we were created for. So this morning, no matter how deep your valley is right now, I want to encourage you that Jesus' rescuing grace will arrive. Oh, come on, Jesus' rescuing grace will arrive. For he will not leave his humbled alone, for they will be rewarded. Heavenly Father, we stand in awe of you when we consider the humility that you demonstrated when you left the realm of eternal glory. Just to know that you humbled yourself by taking on the likeness of a man and then died the death of a cross. And that you did it all for me leaves me in awe of your goodness and your love. Father, how I thank you for sending Jesus. How we thank you for this precious gift you have given us. The example that Christ has set for us and all believers to cultivate the characteristics of humility as evidenced by your love in our lives. May humility of Christ Jesus be produced in our lives today.
Come on, why don't you sing, make me your vessel. got a need in your life right now, why don't you stretch your arm out this morning? Why don't you stretch your arms out this morning? This morning we spoke about humility and the importance of obedience to the Spirit of God. Oh, come on. Father God, we thank you. Father God, I thank you for every hand that is raised in this moment. And Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word that you have spoken. Lord God, what you declared on that cross when you took the form of a man, Lord God, you took our infirmities, Lord Jesus. You took our pain, Lord God. And Father God, you took it to that cross. And Lord God, I pray for every hand that is raised, even now, Lord God. Father God, would you minister your healing power right now, Lord God. Father God, you know every detail, every intimate detail, Lord God, of what people are going through, Lord Jesus, right now. And I pray, Lord God, that you would minister specifically to that need right now in this moment. Father God, I thank you that freedom will take place. Lord God, that healing will take place. Deep wounds, Lord God, are being healed in Jesus' name. Father God, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Spirit, Lord God. The Spirit, Lord God, that moves mountains. The Spirit that can change your lives, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would minister deeply, Lord God, right here and now. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we can bring ourselves to you, Lord God. Father, you hear every prayer, every call, Lord God, every need. So, Father, we bring that to you this morning humbly. Father God, if there are people in here, Lord Jesus, that haven't been brave enough, Lord God, and maybe they hear your voice at times, Lord God, but, but maybe, Lord God, it's, it's fear, Lord God, of what people would think of them, Lord God. I pray, Lord Joe, Jesus, that you would break that today in Jesus' name. Father God, that humility would rise. Humility would take its place, Lord God, here and now. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for an obedience, Lord God, to take place in our lives even now. Lord God, the times that we've tried to walk away and not hear your call for our lives, Lord God. Father God, we we rebuke that now in Jesus' name. And we come before you once again and we say, I am your vessel. Father God, pour the new wine into me, the new wineskin, Lord God. Fill me afresh, Lord God, today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as we sing your praises. Make me a vessel, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Make me a vessel.
Father, for what you have done in the midst of us today, Lord God. Father God, we humbly position ourselves. Father God, hearts, attention, and minds, affection, Lord God, towards you this morning for who you are and for what you have done. Lord God, would you continue, Father God, to be with your people during the week, Lord God. Would you continue, Lord God, the work that you have started today in the lives of your people, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for an outpouring of your spirit, an outpouring of new wine, Lord God, that would take place, Lord God, in our lives today, Lord. Father, we thank you and we honor you, Lord, because you are the king of all kings. Thank you, Father, for your humility. Thank you for your love for us. In your mighty and precious name, we pray, the name of Yahweh, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 